What's up guys? Uh, my name's Andy and uh, today I just want to kind of give you a uh, channel introduction, tell you a little bit about myself and uh, kind of tell you what I'm thinking for this channel and uh, you know the projects that I'm up to and uh, yeah I'm pretty excited. So uh, just to start off you'll see that on my channel, the very small channel that I do have, I have a few videos of uh, MPCNC which is the mostly printed CNC and uh, that's a little introductory machine um, that you put together yourself out of 3D printed parts and uh, stainless steel rails. Um, and uh, I basically got introduced into the CNC world with that machine, which is very hobby level, uh, introductory level machine. So I've all, I was always uh, pretty interested in CNC and uh, wanting to do it or wanting to know how to do it. And I always wanted to know how to you know, draw things in CAD, but I didn't have that knowledge and I didn't have that experience. I didn't have the money really to, to uh, acquire anything, at least I didn't think. And uh, so I got going with the MPCNC and I learned to draw in CAD. I started with a basic program first called Design Spark Mechanical. And uh, actually, it's a really great program. Still, I still love it, like for simple stuff, you know. And now, and I'll explain this too, but now uh, what I do now, I do automotive restoration and, uh, you know, I draw in CAD basically every week and when I want to draw simple flat parts that need to go out to the water jet cutter I just draw them in Design Spark 90% of the time because it's very simple, it's very fast you know there's no lag and uh, uh, I like it a lot so and then I kind of move into Fusion uh, 360 because you know that's you know that's the standard I mean as far as your hobbyist um, you know if you learn that you know it kind of has everything in one and you know it's a legit uh, real program. Um, they still are developing it, you know, um, but you know, you learn that you can probably pretty much uh, draw CAD in a lot of the, the programs that you're that are famous, you know, SolidWorks and AutoCAD and, and all that stuff. So, anyways, so um, I do want to give a little backstory. Um, basically, I grew up uh, around a shop, an automotive shop. And uh, my dad's been running a shop for close to 30 years. And uh, he's done a little bit of everything. He's a very smart guy. You know, I love him to death. And uh, he's taught me so much. And uh, so he's done a little bit of everything. He's done uh, uh, machining, uh, like engine rebuilding, uh, head rebuilding, uh, things like that. Uh, he's, done, he's done a lot of just uh, generic mechanic work now. He mainly does uh, transmission rebuilds. He's got a, uh, a market for it, and that's all he does now. Um, so, but he also, you know, like I said, he's done everything, and he always built everything. And so I learned that and uh, to do everything yourself. So that's the kind of attitude I have. It's just, it's just ingrained in me. And uh, another thing that he did, sort of on a hobby level, but used it in the business a lot, was just machining, old time machining. You know, he had a knee mill. And a, and a nice uh, lathe, basically. And we did, a, we did a lot of stuff. And I was always interested in that. And he showed me things. And I always did little stuff. Um, and yeah, so that's the kind of, uh, you know, environment that I grew up in. Was a, I, it was a shop. It was right by the house. Um, you know, he had a lathe and a mill and all kinds of every hand tool that you can imagine. He's a kind of a tool junkie. Um, we worked on cars. Uh, you know, I did everything. So that, that's basically my experience. So um, fast forward uh, a little, and uh, when I graduated high school, I decided that I wanted to get a degree. And uh, I decided to get that degree in computer networking technology. So, so I gained a lot of computer experience in that, and I got my degree. And uh, so you know, after that, I basically got a job in an office, and I quickly decided that uh, you know, walking in that office every day and sitting down in an office chair with the button-up shirt, you know, and grabbing the bagels and the coffee in the morning and going to a, a, a meeting, you know, uh, it didn't work for me. It wasn't something that I could uh, keep doing. I had to just, and it was a good job. I mean, it was a good opportunity and it was, you know, when I told them that I had to leave, that I just couldn't do it, it wasn't for me, you know, they tried to give me more money and all that and I said, you know, it ain't about that and, uh, you know, I left and I went back home to work with my dad and my brother in the shop so um, as I did that uh, my oldest brother which which ran his own body shop uh, for years uh, actually 
uh, basically shut his shop down for a while because he was kind of burnt out and he ended up getting a job um, with a gentleman that moved here from the East Coast that uh, restores cars, uh, British cars actually, old British cars, which is not really my thing, but still very same stuff, different cars that I was interested in. Um, so he worked in uh, for him for, for quite a while and always found all the stuff they were doing very interesting, very, very deep restoration. And so to make a long story short, I ended up working in that shop and that's that's my job. And uh, that's what I do every day. And uh, very, I'm talking two, three year projects, a um, couple hundred thousand dollars easy. And uh, you know, that's, that's not a brag thing. That's just the reality of it. That's just kind of the kind of work that I do. So it's very highly detailed. I do everything. I mean, you know, I do fabrication, uh, machining. We don't have any CNC stuff. We've got a big knee mill. Um, I do a lot of machining on it. And, uh, you know, fabrication, design, everything. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of my backstory. That's kind of who I am. And I've had, and another thing is I've had a lot of hobbies and I've done a lot of stuff, a lot of really neat stuff, honestly. And a lot of stuff I'm proud of. I do want to also say that I have a wonderful family, a uh, wife and three small children, very small children. So that uh, takes up a lot of my life. But I, I find the time to get out here in the shop I uh, recently bought a place with a shop, a nice shop and everything, so I do get out here at night and get to work on some of the projects that I'm doing. So that brings us to date. And uh, basically, the reason I wanted to start this and kind of create this content was because of the project that I'm doing now. And it relates to the CNC thing. Um, so, you know, the wood thing was great, the wood router was great, learned everything. You know, you, you really do get the ropes, I feel like, when you, when you go through that process and learn how to draw in CAD, how to create CAM from those CAD drawings. And I mean, you are just machining wood, so you don't learn the other stuff like speeds and feeds and, and tools and all that sort of stuff, right? But I learned all that other stuff I didn't know. I do know some about speeds and feeds and all that because I do a lot of manual machining. Um, so uh, anyways, so I, you know, I, I got to a point where the wood was just boring. I mean, there was just nothing I could make that excited me. I mean, I, I like functional stuff. Like, I feel like, you know, all I could make was decorative stuff, like signs and whatever. And that just, that just didn't excite me at all. So, you know, I let it idle for several months and didn't do anything with it. We had, you know, our latest, our youngest child. Uh, recently, so that solved a lot of things, and I didn't really mess with the MPCNC. And uh, boy, then I got back into the CNC stuff. But I still, when I tried to use the MPCNC, I mean, it was very functional for what it was. Just the wood just didn't excite me. I mean, signs didn't excite me anymore, you know. And I mean, you can only make so many like little organizers and stuff, you know. I mean, anyway. So um, basically, I'm moving on. And uh, I got to thinking, and, I, and when I get on something, I really think a lot about it and go deep into it. So I decided to build a mill, what I'm going to call a mill, sort of like um, sort of like a router, but I don't want to call it a router because my purpose is not to route. My purpose is to mill. If it can't mill, it's not, it's not what it's supposed to be. So anyways, uh, so... I did some research to kind of figure out like what would I do, what, what could I do. Actually, you know, I'll tell you what, like a lot, what a lot of people think when they're beginning is, you know, I'd like to buy a Tormont because that's the entry level, you know, it's a real machine, there's a lot of people making real parts on it, um, it's definitely a hobbyist, definitely an entry level uh, metal machine, um, but uh, honestly it's not, it's not something that I can purchase, you know at this point in time just it just is so um i got to thinking you know and i'm always thinking about how i can do something on on a budget but i, I don't think about how to do things cheaply and uh or at least i i don't think i do anyways that's my perception of it I, I hate to cheap things like i mean i hate building cheap things or cutting corners and, and all that stuff uh, if i'm going to do it i want to do it right um so at the same time, though, I think about things, doing things on a, within a budget and doing things as economically 
as possible and still achieve the exact results that I'm looking for. I'm not, I'm not willing to sacrifice quality for the cost, but there's a lot of things that you can save money on if you really try, and I design around that idea. And one thing, uh, so back to it, uh, basically I did a lot of looking on designs and I figured out you know, where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, and I decided and I settled on a fixed gantry mill, which just means the main gantry, the main beam, you know, that's X, does not move in Y on the table. The gantry is fixed, so you get uh, X on your gantry, you get Z on, on you know, your sliding plate on your gantry, and then you get Y with a table that moves in under the fixed gantry. To me, it immediately sparked like an interest because I thought, it just makes sense. It makes sense to me to create that whole structure, a very solid structure, very solid fixed structure. Why move all that stuff around? You know, I see that and I say, why move all that stuff around when you, can, when you can do it like this and you can just move the table around? So that made a lot of sense to me and I really, that kind of excited me. So that's basically what I settled on. And uh, you know, there's some, there's some uh, videos out there and some information out there I think there's one that you'll see called Wado Design. Uh, he's got a website and some videos and stuff. That sparked my interest. It was a pretty heavy duty deal. Uh, pretty neat machine, you know. Kind of way, step above a lot of these. You know, that's, you know, you see massive amounts of aluminum extrusion router bills. And they're nice and they're good for wood and even maybe some aluminum cutting and I see it. Uh, but, ah, uh, man, I, I've messed with that stuff and it's just not that rigid. It's not, you know, I can see that it could set up a lot of acoustics and have a lot of vibration and all that stuff. It's just, I know why people do it because it's, it's simple. Like, you don't have to have a mill or a lathe or anything to make parts to build a machine. You can just, you know, basically buy these extrusion pieces and bolt them together and actually buy all the special T-nuts and everything for it. Um, so I get why people do it and I say, that's great. But for me... It wasn't, I wanted a step above all that stuff. So that Wado design one was sort of, you know, kind of speak, uh, piqued my interest. And another one that really piqued my interest was this old Tony. Um, really great YouTube channel, got a great sense of humor. Really liked that guy. Um, and he had this old router. And he called it a router. Um, and I, I felt, you know, he's done some uh, pretty neat machining on it and stuff. And I felt like kind of that, it was a, I believe, yeah, it was a fixed gantry uh, as well. So that sparked my interest. So I wanted to take these ideas, and my idea was one thing about like this old Tony's is it's pretty large, like rather large. And honestly, my machine has ended up bigger than I was thinking, but what I wanted to do was shrink it down to a very manageable size because the smaller it is, the more rigid it is, the better it's going to cut, right? And my goal is aluminum, purely, purely aluminum at this point. That's the goal, like cut aluminum really well. And one of the reasons that I have to stick with aluminum at this point in time is because of the spindle, the spindles that are available. Um, I did a lot of thinking on this and a lot of looking and I just can't get into a spindle that will uh, cut at low speeds to cut materials like just steel and, and uh, you know, whatever, steel, stainless steel, titanium, all that stuff. You have to have a spindle that you can get down in low RPM and have a lot of torque at that low RPM. And that's just not something that's in my budget at this point in time. Um, I, I would like to think that maybe the machine is going to be rigid enough that I could very well machine steel if I want. If I wanted to invest the you know, $1,500 at least for a Chinese uh, automatic tool changer spindle that will, I forget what they call it, but basically when you turn it down, when you turn the frequency down, it still remains, it still uh, has torque. I forget the name of it, but basically it keeps the same torque uh, curve through the RPM range. And that's the thing that I read about like these 2.2 uh, kilowatt spindles, which is what I'm going to start with. It's just, there's not a lot of options. There's really, really not. So that's what I settled on because I see a lot of guys cutting aluminum well with it. I realize they're cheap. Um, that's what I'm going to start with. Um, and I, I think my expectations are on par with what it actually is. So anyways, so I've started this build and I've done a lot of work on it already. Um, very methodical, uh, you know, 
at night after my family goes to bed, I come out here and I don't get to spend a lot of time on it. So it's been a very slow uh, process. Um, but basically I want to put out some videos and um, see if people are interested in, in what I'm doing and building this machine. That's where I'm going to start because I think it's very interesting and it kind of, uh, you know, there's no one else around me that enjoys this kind of stuff. So CNC stuff in particular. So, uh, you know, I can share it with some other people and kind of get some discussion started and maybe, you know, excite some other people with what I'm doing, you know. Um, so that's the idea. So I guess that's the channel introduction. That's uh, what I'm going to do in future videos. And another thing that I will, will say that's super important, and I deal with this at work a lot. When you're designing, <laughs> it's so important to think about if you're going to machine parts for something like this, which I am machining all of it, I'm actually machining it all in a really little, small, cheap mill, but it's actually really good. Um, we have a big, huge knee mill at work. My dad's got a bigger knee mill, but I just have a small machine right now. But it's it's really great, actually. It's it's really good. Uh, I'm I'm impressed. And uh, but anyways, uh, when you design something. Think about what it's going to take to achieve the end result as far as machining and process and the, well, how would I say this, the, you know, what comes first, what comes second, what comes, the order in which you do things, because all that stuff is so important. You know, when you think about, you know, I've been, I went through and thought about, like, you've got to think about how are you going to get the surfaces flat. And when you think about how you get surfaces flat, you think about, well, are you going to weld anything to whatever the surface is? Because as soon as you weld something to that surface, it's no longer flat. I can promise you that. I've seen this time, time again. I know it's true. So if you're going to machine everything, you need to do it post welding. If you don't want to weld it, then you have to bolt it and have something that's going to like pins to keep something from racking or moving um, if you're going to bolt. Otherwise you need to weld and if you're going to weld you need to machine everything after you weld. Well when you weld stuff on sometimes that stuff gets in the way you know when you have a plate that'd be real easy just to put on the mill table and machine it like that and you you know weld something on the back and here and there and then you can no longer just lay it on the mill table. So you gotta think through the process and you gotta have there's there's things that I've added to this um, purely to assist in machining and I'll explain some of that and it's it's the way you got to do it you got to think about what comes first what comes second what comes, what's the final outcome you want flat surfaces you want square surfaces uh, you want right angles uh, parallel you know everything needs to be parallel and you got to think about how you got to achieve that so anyways that's a tip I think I see a lot of people build stuff like like this stuff and your hobby type builders and they they do a lot of good work but you know like they put it together and they just weld it they just weld something all together and everything and it was perfectly fat before they welded it weld it all together and they slap it all on and you know after you weld something it's not flat you got to think about that also another thing is when you weld something you introduce stress so so even when you sometimes when you machine stuff you got to be really careful and watch it because it's not stress relieved at all and there's stress now because of the welds even little welds. You know, big companies when they do weldments, they get them stress relieved so that all that stress that's created by the weld is relieved so then you can machine it and, and it's going to stay. So anyways, that's stuff to think about. So if, if I don't uh, end the video any other way, I'll just go ahead and end it here and uh, just tell you thanks for watching and check back. I'm going to have some videos up. You know, I don't know how often or whatever, but uh, you know, I think it'll be cool and I think some people will find it real interesting. I appreciate it. Thanks.